Uh, Maitreyi is here to talk about a serious topic that affects us all, and she believes that she has found the solution to that particular problem. Maitreyi, stay annoying, stay fit. Stay annoying, stay fit, Maitreyi. Good morning, everyone. Remember the time you traveled by Indian trains? By show of hands, does anyone remember that travel? What I remember the most about train travel in India is how I had to wait outside the train with my handkerchief in my hand. I had to slide it through the window, drop it on the seat, just to make sure I had a seat. And then the real boarding started. And that's how all of us saved seats back then. I don't know what it is like now. If you have been missing this action, if you have been feeling really nostalgic about India, please, please visit a gym this month. <laughs> the only difference is going to be your gym towel and your water bottle. These things will be used in place of your handkerchief. I got back from a vacation recently and to my it, it wasn't much of a surprise, but it was really depressing. When I walked into the gym to get my first workout of the year, it was a sea of people. There were people waiting at the front desk, waiting to sign up, waiting to sign in. There were people waiting in the locker room, trying to change, trying to get out of that seat. And there were people waiting and staring people down in front of treadmills, just so that they would walk off. It was just an ocean right there. This is what they call the phenomenon of January goers. And if you ask any regular gym goer, they'll tell you how annoying it is, how they hate the people. I looked around and realized it was not going to be easy. My one hour workout had slowly but terrifyingly unfolded into this two hour long session, most of which was really just waiting for equipment. <laughs> I wasn't too happy. But I realized this is the time of the year when a lot of people resolve to get fit and they all hit the gym all at once like a tsunami. There was no running away from this. Fitness and good health have been talked about to death these days. We hear about it at home and outside, at work, anywhere you go, even in Toastmasters clubs. But there was a time when things were simpler. When I was a kid, I didn't have to worry about this. I didn't know what fitness was, what food I had to eat. Anything went in, didn't matter. Through the week, my mom made sure I had good food. It was tasty, it was healthy. And on the weekends, I remember the long journey to this local bakery called Butter Sponge. We went there, filled up on a lot of baked goods, and it kept me happy for the rest of the week. Things were a lot easier when you didn't have to worry at all. And my life revolved around good food. I have such great memories of food. The best memories are about food. I was so involved in eating good food that my sister often had to remind me, you need to eat to live, not live to eat. Well, that changed. After a while, for the very first time, I had to attempt to get to it. I went on a very strict diet. I had dal and roti every single night. I went swimming every day. Even when it was raining, I pulled my sister to go swimming. We did this for a while, and then the taste of the dal and roti made me sick and I stopped. And then I joined undergrad school. I was nice and chubby again. But everyone around was healthy, so I had to look good. And I decided, okay, let me get back on this dal and roti diet, and I did. I lost weight, I lost a lot of weight, I got new clothes, I was happy. And then I came to US to do my masters. You can guess the rest of the story. That's when I learned lesson number one. Perseverance is very important. It doesn't matter if you have a goal, you have to continue well, way beyond past the point. I looked around to see if anyone had better solution, if I could just pick their own solution. I spoke to a dear friend of mine. He looked fit and he was very involved in a lot of team sports. He played every single day. He played tennis, he played racquetball, he played cricket, he played soccer. But there was a slight problem. The second time I met him, he was actually chubby. I asked him, what happened? You play so much. How can you put on so much weight? He said most of his teammates were from work. When things got busy at work, there was no team. 
and there was no workout. And this guy, he sneered when I suggested, why don't you go to a gym? So I left it at that. And there, I learned lesson number two. You cannot be dependent on others for your fitness. You need to take it in your own hands and you cannot have a single form of workout. I thought, let me look around a little more. I was about to get married two years ago. And my current husband, back then my fiance, was working very hard. You can guess why. The Indian rituals required the groom to be bare chested and that gives a lot of motivation and incentive. <laughs> so this guy right here worked very hard. Every time I called him in the evening, he was busy, he was at the gym. When I went home for my wedding one week prior to the date, he would actually packed on a few pounds. I was terribly confused. How is it even possible? He was working out. I looked at his mom and asked him, what, what's going on? She, she said with so much pride, Arjun has been working out so much that he now needs 10 chapatis every night. <laughs> 10 chapatis? His workout probably burned 2 chapatis at most. Lesson number 3. It is so easy to overestimate the work you do and underestimate the calories that we consume. I looked in my own backyard before I decided to give up. My dad was a healthy man all his life. Ever since I was a little girl, I remember him sneaking off at 5 a.m. every morning. Come hail, come storm, he was out on his brisk walk. He always did this, no matter how hard things got, no matter when he went to bed. And he always also set an example with food. He never overindulged, and uh, he, but he didn't deprive himself of anything either. And this was very impressive because this man grew up on a steady diet of rich foods laden with ghee and a lot of sweets. But he will be able to retrain his own brain at a much later age. I stepped back and realized my own experiences. These people unwittingly had shown me so many lessons in my life. I learned that fitness is not one goal but it is a journey. It is a lifestyle and it needs to be a lifestyle if you want to make it stick. And as much as I love my Thai sadam like anyone else in this room, I've also learned to love sweet potatoes and bake simple foods. If Steve Jobs said to students, stay hungry, stay foolish, I say to all the January goers everywhere in the world, stay annoying, stay foolish.